Psalm 118 says, This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Good morning and welcome. So nice to see all of you here this morning. Uh, Visitors, please sign the attendance registers located in each row. Please stand now in body or spirit and join me in our call to worship and remain standing through the response. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. Let us worship God. bow your heads for our opening prayer. God of the living, through baptism we pass from the shadow of death to the light of resurrection. Remain with us and give us hope that rejoicing in the gift of the Spirit, who gives life to our mortal flesh, we may be clothed with the garment of immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn today is hymn number 275, A mighty fortress is our God.
If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves. Let us confess our sins before Almighty God. Let us pray. Merciful God, forgive our fearlessness in the face of earthly foes. We know we should depend on you, but find ourselves frightened by recent events. We look to the world for answers to problems. We fight to ensure we get our share of resources without regards to the needs of others. Lord, forgive us when in our fear we fail to trust in your promises and refuse to consider the needs of those around us. Forgive us as we humbly try to be faithful followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Please pray silently. And the people say, Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. seated. Please bow your heads for our prayer of illumination. Through Christ you made a new creation, O God, for with him we pass from sin to the new life of grace. Accept our prayers in the warm embrace of your compassion and welcome all people to the festive banquet of your table where we may rejoice in your love and celebrate the inheritance you have given us. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalter lesson today comes from Psalm 23. Please read it responsibly with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. You may follow along in your pew Bibles on pages 259 and 260 of the Old Testament. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethamite, for I have provided for myself a king amongst his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peacefully. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Elib 
and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance, or not on height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not, does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abednab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Sama pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to the Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all these sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The choir will now sing the anthem, We Are Not Alone. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from John 9, 1 through 41, and you may follow along in your pew Bibles on page 102 and 103 of the New Testament. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. 
We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread it on the man's eyes, saying, Go, wash in the pool of Salome, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back and was able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how are your eyes opened? He said, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Salome and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He answered, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees began to ask him how he received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God. He does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It Was your eyes he opened? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who was blind from birth? How does he now see? His parents answered, We know that he is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who has been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know is that I was born blind, and now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've already told you, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that Moses has spoken to God. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, He is is a man, excuse me, the man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the ones who worship him and obey his will. Now, since the world has begun, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind? If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, the one who is speaking with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see and those who do, not, who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, We see, 
your sin remains. The word of the Lord. Well, after that scripture, I have to catch my breath. (laughs) A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the need for food at our community food banks. And I read an article on it this week. Um, Did you know that the average person receiving food assistance gets approximately $3 per person per day for food? Um, That's an awful small amount to feed a family on. And right now you can't even buy a fast food meal for that. But I was reading the article and it was talking about the increased need. Joblessness has increased. Um, Hunger has increased. And the amount of giving has decreased. It's not a surprise. But what was a surprise to me was reading the comments. And I repeatedly saw comments that said, well, beggars can't be choosers. And at least that was because when talking to someone, when interviewing someone that worked at a food bank, they said, please don't bring any more green beans and corn. Somebody bring some fruit. We have a whole pantry of green beans and corn. And another thing they pointed out was, we have lots of macaroni and cheese boxes, but they don't do people who don't have butter and milk any good. They can't make the macaroni and cheese. And the response came, well, if people are hungry enough, they'll eat whatever we give them and be grateful. If you've ever fed a very hungry toddler, you know that's not true. They will not just eat anything stuff before them. And the attitude is wrong in the first place. We shouldn't be saying, here are our leftovers, good luck. Jesus healed a blind man. He doesn't go halfway. He didn't say, here, I'm gonna make one eye see, and you should be grateful because that's better than you had before. He heals a blind man. And he healed him on the Sabbath but he did it to show God's power and God's love for humanity. Now, because he healed it on the Sabbath, he got into some hot water. The people in the synagogue, the priests, were not happy with him, which is not unusual. They frequently were not happy with him because he had healed on the Sabbath and that was their day of rest and they felt he wasn't observing it. So they call this poor, unfortunate man in and says, so exactly how did you do this? Then they decided it wasn't really him and called his parents in. And by that time, the parents were terrified. And all they would tell him is, yeah, he's our son, and we don't know how this happened. Talk to him. He's an adult. So they called him back in and said, tell us again. And the man says, why? Do you want to follow him? Why do you need me to tell you this story again? And that made them angry because they were looking for a way to control the narrative. That's what we'd call it now. That's what they say in all the political shows. One party wants to control the narrative. Well, these people sought to control the narrative. They didn't want anything that sounded different from what they believed. Everybody should stay on the straight and narrow. And that's that's a hard thing to do sometimes. Uh, because power doesn't always do what you expect it to. Power from God is not limited to what we understand, but those in power at this point didn't want anything different than what they said. Anything that didn't fit their box, they rejected. I think we do that some. We look at something and it doesn't fit exactly what we want. So we reject it. We say it can't possibly be God's will. But we don't choose. We don't have the say. But Jesus healed this man to show God's power. He healed him completely and without any hesitation. God gives us his best. When he heals us, our bodies are our spirits. 
when he reaches down to support us in times of trouble, he gives us his best. He gave us his only son that we would have everlasting life. How can we give anything but our best back to a God who has given us his son? We should not give our leftovers. We should give our first fruits. God deserves our best efforts, our love, our devotion and our praise. And for him, when we reach out to other people, those in need in the community, we should give to them our best efforts to show the world who Jesus Christ is and what God calls us to do. We need to represent the God we worship and adore in all that we do and say. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let those who are able stand as we sing hymn 802, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. join me in our affirmation of faith as it is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now Pat Nash would like to bring us a minute for mission. Women's Meeting Space is a non-governmental organization that advocates for the rights of Panama's women, both indigenous and from its poorest communities. It helps the women primarily heads of household who are unemployed and their families grow food at home to help them overcome the challenges made worse by the pandemic, including high unemployment. This partner organization receives funding from the Presbyterian Committee on the Self-Development of People, ESTOP, which is supported by Presbyterian's generous gifts to one great hour of sharing, which we'll be collecting Easter Sunday. We started in the Dominican Republic in 2007, Belize in 2010, and Panama in 2018. Everywhere we go, most of the organizations reach out to the, uh, our women's organizations because all these poor countries, children and families, mostly depend on women for everything they need to live. As women everywhere struggle to put food on their families' tables, many women whose lives are being transformed by this project are grateful that the people across the PCUSA continue to think about them. Let's pray. Walk with us, O God, as we serve you and partner with those in need. May our gifts and our prayers support those whose work to bring life and hope in their communities. Amen. I would like to add a joy of sorts. William's been helping me clean out my office for the last week as I'm closing up. And one of the days this week, uh, I got a phone call I had to take. So I took the phone call and I'm sitting next to an old wooden file cabinet that has been emptied. And he's standing beside me and the next thing I know I hear a crash. And I look over the file cabinets on the floor and I can see this much of his head and his fingers stick it out from under it. And for a brief moment, I had terror. Um, I picked it up, got him out from under it, and not even a scratch. I have no idea how. Um, but I am grateful for favors like that. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us, for the gift of friends and family, for the gift of health, for the gift of our homes and enough to eat, we thank you. We're grateful for all these things, knowing that in a blink of an eye, things could change. But we stand in your love and your support with the knowledge that no matter what happens, you are with us. We thank you this day for those around us who stand up for you, who promote your kingdom, who love those who are in need and provide for them. Be with them as they do their ministry. 
and show people your love through them. We pray this day for all people who find themselves in harm's way. Those who find themselves in the path of hurricanes and earthquakes, all sorts of natural disasters, wars and disasters of human making. Be with them, give them hope, give them comfort. Let them know that you are always with them. We pray this day for the leaders of this world, that they may hear your voice, that you may soften their hearts so that they will reach out and love the people they are in charge of, that they may do what is best for all people. We pray for the leadership of this country, those elected and those running, that they too may have a heart for you that they may care more about people than their own power. We pray this day for all those who have been mentioned here, those who are in need of your healing touch, and for all those who have not been mentioned. Be with them, heal them, give them hope and courage for whatever lies ahead. And pray today we pray as you taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us bring our gifts of tithes and offerings. Let us come to God with our prayer of thanksgiving. Discerner of hearts, you look beneath our outward appearance and see your image in each of us. Banish in us the blindness that prevents us from recognizing the truth, so we may see the world through your eyes and with the compassion of Jesus Christ who redeems us. Amen. Our last hymn today is hymn number 286, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
love of God on everyone you see. And now we'll bless the meal so nobody has to wait before the benediction. God, thank you for the opportunity for food and fellowship, for a chance to meet together and eat and enjoy one another's company. In your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Render no one evil for evil, but seek justice and walk humbly with your God. Amen.